All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, it's time for another student of the gun radio, another soon to be award winning student of the gun radio. And if we don't get an award for last week's show, well, then then the then the, the voting system is is rigged. <laughs> Florida constitutional carry, yes, it did happen. In case you missed it, uh, liberals terrorizing uh, a a woman named Riley Gaines. You may have seen this in the news. If you didn't see it in the news, it's not really surprising because uh, the news is run by scumbag Democrat liberal pieces of crap, and uh, it doesn't. This doesn't help their agenda. So I, I'm assuming this one will probably a it'll be a one and done. We reported it one time. We'll never talk about it again. That way we have cover. Oh, hey, you remember last week we talked about uh, we talked about what you could do or what you should do to practice if you're a, a, a novice at duracoating or if you're a novice gun refinisher. Uh, and we kind of joked about, well, just get a high point and uh, practice on it. And then that has morphed into something else. So uh, we're going to talk about that today. What is a battle rifle? I don't know. What is a battle rifle? We're going to talk about that. And then we've got a quick reminder for you about the NRA annual meeting, which is coming up this coming weekend, in case you missed it. All of that and more goodness on today's Student of the Gun Radio. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping ogre, Zach Martin. Now, give it up for your beloved host, the Pin Pan of America, Professor Paul Markle. Jared is still on the road on family vacay, so you've just got Zachary and I. Uh, but today we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Go ahead, Zach. I say, but he will be there at the NRA booth with us as well. But, yes. So you don't want you guys to hear his voice again soon. But, yes, exactly. So let's go ahead and, and uh, just jump right into that uh, public service announcement. Uh, we will be at the NRA annual meetings in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, this coming weekend, the 14th, 15th, and 16th of April. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We will be uh, we'll be camping out. We'll be uh, in the Glock booth. There will be an official student of the gun radio uh, table set up, whatever, at their mobile studio uh, in the Glock booth. But the most important thing, and this is why you definitely want to be there on Saturday if you can make it, is that Saturday at 1 p.m. local time, at Saturday, 1 p.m. local time, we will be doing a Student of the Gun 10th anniversary uh, celebration book launch, and we're going to officially, we're going to partner with the folks from Tactical Response, and we're going to do the first public book launch of The Four Pillars of Fighting by James Yeager. And if you've listened to the previous shows, you know that uh, that yours truly had a part in, uh, in making that a reality and because it is a bfd because it's a party because it's a celebration we're going to uh, be giving away a lot of good stuff our friends at glock have consented to give away they're donating a glock 19 generation 5 a new pistol uh, in honor of james jager who carried a 19 a glock 19 his whole life or at least uh as soon as he discovered that there was a Glock 19, he started carrying one. Uh, we've got uh, prizes from Night Fission. That's uh, we're gonna they're gonna be giving away uh, Glock 19, 17 slash 17 sights. You know how that works. The 17, 19, all that they work thing. Uh, so they're gonna be nuclear at student of the gun accurate sights from Night Fission. They're gonna have a set of those to give away. Uh, the folks at Tactical Response have uh, talked to Power Tack Lights, who will be giving away an EDC light. Uh, NSR Tactical will be giving away a holster because James wore an NSR Tactical holster. And KnifeKits.com will be giving away a knife kit uh, in honor of James Jaeger. So everybody who shows up and gets a book, 
uh, that we're going to have physical copies of the four pillars of fighting. Uh, they will be there. Uh, we will have student of the gun books. We will have the martial application of the pistol, rifle, shotgun. We'll have those books. So uh, it's going to run. We're going to start it at one o'clock officially, and we're going to run it for two hours, and then uh, we will choose. We'll choose you, Pikachu. Uh, we'll read off the numbers, and whoever uh, is there, yes, you have to be there. This is not a mail-in giveaway. Uh, you can't send us a postcard. You're going to have to be there, be physically present to get to, to receive these gifts. And no, we're not going to hand you a pistol on the the show, the floor of the show. You'll get a gift certificate. Uh, but yeah, I, but the other stuff, I think all all the other stuff will be physical. It'll be right there. So you'll walk away with a holster, flashlight, knife kit, um, set of sights, whatever. And and of course, a student of the gun will have special stuff too. We'll have stuff to give away. Uh, well, as always, as we always do. Isn't that correct, Zachary? Zachary's going to make sure that happens. Yes, indeed. It is true. Because we love to treat you guys. We'll give, give you guys fun stuff. And one of those fun stuff is the SOTG Rocks uh, guitar picks. So it's going to be in white and monochrome. And uh, we'll have that. And we'll have all the kinds of other cool stuff as well, including our presence for free. Yeah. You're welcome. Yes, we'll be there. So uh, it's going to be a good time. This is this is our opportunity for all of us to get together in one place. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. So uh, if you are within driving distance of Indianapolis, I would highly suggest that you come by. And if you've never been to an NRA annual meeting, I will tell you this. Uh, the price of admittance is an NRA membership. So if you're already an NRA member... That's cool. You just come in with your card and you walk up and you show them your card and they're like, cool. And they give you a neck hanger and you come in. And if you're not, and you're like, uh, I let it lapse or I never have been or whatever. That's cool too. Uh, you can show up, you can walk up and talk to one of the many dozens of nice gentlemen or ladies and buy yourself an annual membership and they will say thank you and they'll give you a little neck hanger and you come in. So there you go. All right, uh, moving on. We've got a Duracoat finished firearm segment of the week. Uh, as all, unless you have something else to say, Zach. I like that. We, we, I was going to say we have the review of the week. Oh, do you have uh, the review of the from week? From iTunes. Oh, cool. I do have the review of the week. I forgot to put in the notes. Uh, I didn't expect to do this, but I figured we probably should. It's there. So it's there. All right. Yeah. The review of the week. Brrr. There you go. Review of the week. After that jump scare, we got a review from uh, the end of March. So pretty recent from C towns. 83. He said, great show. Look forward to every single new episode. Legacy media is dead. Podcasts are the only way to get news and info nowadays. There you go. So, and that was from much. iTunes. Yep. That is from the iTunes, Apple podcast thing. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And if you'd like to be the review of the week and get your uh, 15 seconds of fame here, then uh, we'll get your butt on your favorite pod catcher, whether it's Spotify or iHeartRadio or iTunes or TuneIn or Stitcher. DC Public and DC GP, those are things. Discord. Oh, Public Discord. Discord. Oh, okay. I thought that was like District of Columbia. I'm like, what the what? Or, or comic books, right? <laughs> All right, Duracoat finished firearm segment of the week. Let's do it. All right, so uh, last week we talked about, we, we walked a little bit down memory lane. We're talking about the sexy can contest that we did way back in 2018. All the way back in 2018, we did that. And, uh, you know, that came about because I had suggested that if you have never done a Duracoat project and you were worried that you might screw up your favorite gun to just get an ammo can and practice on the ammo can and if you screwed up the ammo can you're out nothing i mean who cares <laughs> you know seriously we're like who cares if you screw up the job on an ammo can not a big deal just move on with your life 
And so last week I was, we were being a little bit tongue in cheek and I said, well, if you don't have any experience or you're looking to practice or whatever, I said, go get yourself a, a high point C9 or whatever, or a carbine and, and, uh, do your first dura coat job on that. And, you know, you'd rather, I'd rather do that on that than on, you know, a $1,900 custom AR or whatever. And well, that morphed into, well, <laughs> guess what that morphed into? Well, that morphed into uh, an idea between myself, us here at Student of the Gun, and High Point, and Duracoat. So we got all of our collective brains together in the last week, and I said to him, I said, hey, this is my proposal. You know how we did the sexy can contest, and everybody liked it, and you know we picked prizes and, and so forth, and uh, let's do a sexy High Point contest. And Duracoat will give away some prizes and High Point will give away some prizes and we will give away some prizes or whatever. We'll do like a, and usually we, we do a, like a grand prize, like a, like a first prize, second prize, grand prize kind of a thing, you know? Uh, so this is it. This is, this is the, the sneak preview behind the scenes that I'm telling you guys, uh, we're going to do it. Now we're not going to officially launch it until uh, till we get back from the NRA annual meeting because we're going to be believe it or not we're going to be really very busy uh, for the next week or so. But once we get back and, and the dust settles a little bit from the NRA show, uh, we will send out notifications with all of the specifics. It's not going to be too crazy. Uh, it'll you know, ba- essentially. You have to, it's like the sexy can contest. In order to be eligible, you have to take photos of it. You have to tell us which Duracoat colors specifically you used. uh, One, two, three, five, whatever. Uh, Tell us what Duracoat colors you used. uh, What the model of High Point was, whether it was a C9 or C45 or C380 or or the, what's the new one? The the JXP10? Is it JXP10? Yep. I, I'm pretty I, sure it's the JXP10. Yeah, the JXP10. So basically, what we're saying later. now is we're heads up to order this stuff. Yeah, and be prepared for when we launch the. Contest. Right. So yeah, uh, heads up, pay attention. Uh, heads up, pay attention, and uh, what you'll need in, in order to uh, in order to win the contest uh, is, and and it's going to be a judged contest. It's not going to be a vote contest. You know, they, they said, do you guys want to vote? Do you want to have the people vote or you want to have judges? I'm like, we're going to do judges because we've, we've allowed, we've opened the, the, the gates of the asylum previously. Yeah. Uh, and it was not pretty. So we're going to keep the asylum gates closed this time. And we're just going to allow the professional judges or celebrity judges. We'll have celebrity professional uh, judges, a panel of experts. Uh, will judge and their their decision is final end of story okay uh, yeah. <laughs> so there you go those are your marching orders now you're like oh come on man i don't i don't want to buy a high point well then don't and don't participate i don't care nerd but i'll give you a hint you want a hint hit me uh if you go to almost any gun shop like a big gun shop or a pawn shop I don't know if you guys have pawn shops where you live. Uh, I think everyone has pawn shops. But uh, if, well, some places don't. But uh, if you go to any, a big gun shop or a pawn shop, chances are really good that there is in the used handguns case. You know, they usually have those jeweler cases, display cases full of used handguns. Chances are really good that there will be a high point in that. Uh, So you can pick one up. It's not like they're expensive anyway. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not like it's going to break the bank for you to get a C nine or whatever. So there you go. That is uh, that's coming down the bike. It's coming down the bike. So uh, uh, you guys are the first people to know about it. So congratulations to you. Uh, we're going to do a sexy can or a sexy can a sexy high point contest, and uh, of course, you know, in order to be eligible, you can't put like racist or vulgar or, you know, just be in good I, taste. 
yeah. have fun, but you know, have some taste. And the thing, and and of course, you'll have to share pictures on uh, socialist media. And uh, we'll the, get the exact like numerology to put on there to make yourself valid in the future once we figure out exactly what that's going to be. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll have all the specs for you. But uh, if you want to get ahead of the game, uh, you get like, your, go ahead. Hashtag sexy high point. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Like hashtag, hashtag Duracoat. You have to hashtag it Duracoat, student of the gun, and, and high point. Student of the gun or SOTG? We'll figure that out later. Yeah, let's not, let's not nuke it. <laughs> let's not nuke it right now, but yeah, probably SOTG would be the best. We, you know what's crazy? Well, it's not really crazy. It's, it's actually sad to me that um, we are Instagram. Uh, page uh, is essentially hashtag throttled. We can hashtag all kinds of stuff, anything. And it does. I've discovered Zach that it doesn't matter whether or not it's a gun photo or a photo of, it could be a photo of a puppy. Uh, and I can hashtag it S O T G and post it. And because it comes from us, they remove it. They, they remove it. That's uh, right. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've noticed that, uh, yeah, any, anything that we post that we hashtag, uh, like the like SOTG, PFT, fill in the blank, just about anything, I'll, I'll check and see if it went up, and it'll be there initially. And then I'll come back the next day, and it'll be gone. It'll have disappeared. Miraculously, it'll have disappeared uh, I thought that didn't they bring those uh, big tech scumbags in front of Congress and spank them about arbitrary censorship? Didn't they take the uh, the lizard person? Then they then they call Mark Zuckerberg lizard man uh, up in front of Congress and and spank him publicly about random and arbitrary censorship. This is a question. Actually, not sure. I remember they took him up and they talked to him, but I don't remember how how much spanking there was. I don't remember what the actual result of the whole situation was. So what happened is that they're like, "Why are you arbitrarily censoring people?" And he's like, "We're not." And then he said, "Okay, well, we are, but it's not our fault because the FBI told us to." All right. Okay. So my question is, where is Congress on the out of control FBI, and why is the FBI? telling pri- supposedly private companies, private utilities, communication networks, why are they giving them instructions on what people, which people and what words to censor? I don't think that says, repre- you know, nothing quite says representative republic like having the secret police running a censorship campaign. No, no, we, we can't allow people to to have access to disinformation. We can't allow that. Really? So you're the ones who get to decide? Yes, we're the ones who get to decide what you can hear and see and read and what you are not allowed to hear, see, or read because we're in charge and you're peasants. Oh, okay, I got it. Got it now. All right. So there you go. So you want to uh, go over and check out Duracoat Finished Firearms. Uh, it's at DuracoatFinishedFirearms.com or studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. That'll take you right to directly to Duracoat University and uh, or High, high Point Firearms. It's High-PointFirearms.com. Uh, see what they've got. See what the, the going price is on one that you're going you're gonna to take care of. Juxi, J-U-X-X-I, Juxi.com or studentofthegun.com slash Juxi is where you want to go to check out our videos. And uh, Zach, what is the latest, coolest video up on the Juxi.com platform? Well, the, the, the answer to that question is the BBOB video where you sat down with a gigantic backpack and talked about the big bug out bag that can be full of all kinds of goodies just depending on where you're planning to go with it. Yeah, which is something important that people don't often talk about or think about. It's where the hell are you actually going with it? Oh yeah, people say, "Well, what should I have in my bug out bag?" You know, I've got a bug out bag, or do I need a bug out bag, or bug it out and blah blah blah. And that's like, okay, well, before you do that, you have to to look in the mirror. You have to you know 
intellectually, you know, be intellectually honest with yourself and say, where am I going? And what do I plan to do when I get there? Because that's going to help you decide, well, (laughs) that should be the determining factor of what you want to carry with you, what you want to put in the bag, how big the bag is going to be, and so forth is, well, where are you going? And what are you planning to do when you get to where you're going? Because, well, those things matter. (laughs) Well, I don't see how that matters. It's like, well, there you go. If you don't see how that matters, then then there is no pleasing you. (laughs) As... uh, as a gold finger would say, then the or gold member would say, then there is no pleasing you. Yes. Yes, indeed. All right. Jukesy.com. If you're not following us on Jukesy.com, you should be. You're wrong. If you don't know why, you need to listen louder. There you go. All right. And speaking of listening louder, if you're a new listener or a recent listener or whatever, uh, close that hole underneath your nose, open up both of your ears and listen louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeed. That's what you can do. That is what you should do. You should go to studentofthegun.com. And if you'd like to be a member of the grad program and get the special bonus hour on Thursday and Friday, and of course, get all the special bonus stuff, the grad program exclusive stuff. One of the things that uh, we don't talk about enough, but it is, it is in fact a, uh, the case, is that uh, when we release a training course, when we open up enrollment for a training course, whether it is a the precision rifle course or the beyond the boo-boo course or anything like that, the first people to be notified are the grad program, are members of the grad program. They get first dibs. So if it sells out, it sells out to the grad program. That's how that works, in case you're wondering how that worked. So uh, that and is- part of the reason that it usually sells out to the grad program is because the grad program members also will often get a very special discount on the cost of the class. That is true. That is true. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we... So if we, you want... You, you have your... No, go ahead. I fit... Okay. <laughs> but like, such ah! as the covertly highly acclaimed... He's he, he's getting me five seconds after I talk. Uh, the covetedly and highly acclaimed uh, high high rifle high precision rifle course, high elevation, high altitude precision rifle course thing, the precision rifle course that takes place in Wyoming. Damn it! Is uh, the grad program gets what is it twenty five percent off? It's a significant discount. It's a pretty good discount. So there you go. If, if like if you. Want to join the grad program and you want to go to the high point, the high point, the high elevation class, you can sign up and then get the coupon and then pay for the class. And then boom, you've basically paid for your pro- grad program subscription for like a year. Yep. Or two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the value uh, of the of what you get uh, far outweighs uh, far outweighs what you're going to spend. So you're actually going to it's like getting the. If you take one of the classes, it's like getting the grad program or being enrolled in the grad program for free. So that is that, Mr. That's That. All right. So it is time now, according to my show notes, and I believe my show notes are correct, it is time for another Brownells Bullet Points brought to you by our good friends at brownells.com. All right, bing, bang, boom. That's uh, You heard the music, and what that means is that uh, it is time for another Brownells bullet points, and uh, it's going to... Uh, today, we're going to talk about battle rifles, and you say, I this was not really... 
wasn't really a thing when I was coming up. I don't remember it being a thing. I don't remember the term battle rifle. You know where I think it came from, Jared or Zach? I think this is how it snuck into the vernacular. I think it's I think it snuck into the vernacular because of Call of Duty. We, That's entirely possible. Or or video games or something. Uh, but here in yeah here in our modern world. Here in our modern world, when people in the gun culture, when they say battle rifle, generally they're talking about a 308 or a 762 by 51 NATO chambered rifle. And good examples of battle rifles would be the FN FAL also known as the R1, also known as the the L1, A1, as the, uh, this has lots and lots of names, is a C1, the C1, A1, uh, and or the SA58 from uh, DS Arms. Uh, and, and it's sad to me that, uh, that they don't exist, or they don't make them anymore, that Belgium doesn't make them anymore. Uh, but DS Arms does. And they make probably the most faithful reproduction of a metric FAL rifle that, that you can get. Uh, I've got one. I have the Bush Warrior. Uh, and it is as close, basically, it's as close to an original R1 uh, African battle rifle as you're going to get. We've done numerous videos about that. But uh, other ones, people that would, would consider other... Uh, rifles to be battle rifles would be the the g3 the h and k g3 uh also known as the hk91 and there are other companies um the set me c-e-t-m-e uh which is a spanish version is actually the precursor to the g3 it came before uh the g3 and the m1a or the m14 would be considered a battle rifle what else would be considered a battle rifle, Zach? Um, honestly, in my brain, battle rifle means that it it fires in bursts. Uh, <laughs> now, so you got you got an FAL. Oh, some people would say that the original battle rifle was the uh, the uh, Garand, uh, the the M1 Garand. People would say, well, that's the original. That's the granddaddy of all battle rifles. Is the is that one? But you got the the uh, the HKG three, the Set Me, the M fourteen, or the M one A, the FN FAL. If you can get your hands on a Beretta, the Beretta BM fifty nine, or the AR ten. Now the AR ten is would be you know that's an old school that could be considered an old school battle rifle. And why are you bringing this up, Paul? Why are you bringing this up? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why I'm bringing this up. You know, a lot of folks out there in America today, they're all goo goo gaga about the uh, the the AR15 or the M4 or the the 187,000 variants of Stoner's AR15 design that are out there. And uh, they're really excited about them. And that's cool, and there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of you guys, a lot of folk like myself, really and truly appreciate a a genuine fighting rifle like the FNFAL or the G3. And a lot of you guys have them. Now, my question to you is, do you have a G3? Do you have an FAL? Do you have a set me? Do you have a uh, some version of the m1a m14 style you know maybe you're a super cool guy and you've got your hands on one of the 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 beretta bm59s or what have you or maybe you've got a uh, a battle configuration ar10 and when i say a battle configuration most of the ar10 style guns today are all super tricked out with rails and scopes and stuff like that now i'm talking about just iron sights bro how about a carrying handle how many of you guys have an actual carrying handle ar-10 well i i don't know how many do you would you want to get together 
Would you participate? Would you be willing to participate in a battle rifle training class where the the prereq is that you show up with some form of real, genuine battle rifle, given the definitions that we just talked about. Essentially, a semi-automatic, gas-operated, magazine-fed, 308-762 NATO rifle. Would you like to? Would you be willing to, to participate in something like that? Because I'm going to tell you a story, Zach. I was... Sitting the other day, and I was thinking with my mind brain, that's a thing, I was thinking with my mind brain about all of the uh, all the cool guy rifle classes and stuff that are out there in the world, and I thought, why, doesn't, why isn't somebody running a genuine fighting battle rifle class? And I thought, well, I'm a smart guy. I know a little bit about training and what it takes to conduct training a little bit, a little bit of experience. Why don't we do that? (laughs) I have the perfect place to do it. That's the question. We got the perfect place to do it. Uh, We do it up in the mountains uh, in, in carbon County, Wyoming. Uh, So my question to you guys for this Brownells bullet point segment uh, is this. Would you be interested in participating? And you know, this this cannot be like the pink ladies T-shirt thing. You know, when we said, hey, do you guys want pink T-shirts? And then people are like, oh, yeah, we want them. And then we spent hundreds of dollars to print them up. And the lady said, well, if you give me one, I'll wear it. I'm not going to buy it, but if you give me one, I'll wear it. Well, here's the deal. I'm not giving away training. Because my time is worth money. But uh, if you would be interested, if you think it would be a great idea, rather than allowing your FAL or your G3 or, or your AR-10 to sit in the safe and just be a safe queen, you know, how many of us have safe queens? Like, we don't ever take it out and shoot it, but boy, it sure is there. And it's in the safe and it looks pretty. Pull it out and rub it maniacally with an oily rag and then put it away. Wouldn't it be better for you to actually get out and run that thing yeah yeah i don't know how many of you have the stones how many of you have the cojones to get out and and run your battle rifle in a real genuine training course i don't know we'll find out we'll find out uh it'd be like the wayback machine it'd be like the wayback machine you know who we need to be if we do that zach if we get enough uh enough feedback on this i think we should get uh, the guys at fire force ventures to be of texas fire force ventures of texas uh they are the number one purveyor of brushstroke rhodesian brushstroke camouflage clothing and accessories in the united states i i don't think zach are there any other companies off make Offering genuine Rhodesian brushstroke in the United States? No. Zach doesn't know of any. So, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm looking up their website right now. So, it's fireforceventures.com of Texas, of Tejas. And uh, they have the no kidding. And if you don't understand the significance of that and, and why it's important, you need to... You need to go ahead and brush up on a little bit of your history. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think that would be a fantastic idea. And I don't know if Hank's listening right now. Hank, are you listening right now? <laughs> we'll find out if Hank's listening right now. Uh, but they are in Denison, Texas. Where on God's green earth, where in the Republic is Denison, Texas? I'm going to have to look that up because I'm not – I'm not sure where in the Republic Denison, Texas is. Now, a lot of you, you Texans are, you Texans are like, well, duh, I know exactly where that is. I'm like, well, all right, that's cool. <laughs> oh, let me see, let me see. Oh man, uh, Denison, Texas is right by the Oklahoma border. It looks like 
I'm trying to bring up googlemaps.com here. But uh, yes, indeed, Denison, Texas is where they are. Uh, no, they're by the Oklahoma River. Yeah, they're not by Oklahoma. They're by the Oklahoma River. And they are almost, they're directly north of Plano. They are directly north of Plano, Texas. So there you go. So there you go. So if you want to support a, uh, a Texas company, uh, if we can get this thing together, because I'm, I'm really kind of excited about it. I really, I want to do it. Uh, and if we can do it, if we can make it happen, uh, I think that would be fantastic. Uh, and I'd like to get those guys involved. So there you go. There you go. And uh, thank you to Brownells for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak into this microphone about battle rifles and, and training and all that good stuff. All right. Uh, it's time for me to be quiet for a second and to let Zach talk. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the Pimp Hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed you do. ShopSOTG.com is where you should go right now, today, immediately, and uh, check out all of our awesome stuff. So right now, the the thing, because we have a sale every week, uh, the PFT vinyl is on sale. You all go right. ahead and slap it on your car, or you can put it on your laptop, your filing cabinet, or something else if you're scared of someone seeing the four circles on the back of your car and saying they need to run you off the road because you're the leader of a right-wing radical militia or some <laughs> bull crap. Like, here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to shame you guys a little bit because... We, we've gotten a bunch of comments about like, oh, I'm trying to be the gray man and all that. It's like 99.999% of people don't know what the what the PFT symbol means at a glance. And most of that 1.1% per, is you guys and like-minded individuals. Yeah. If you're afraid of putting that on your bumper, thinking that, oh, well, somebody will target my car and smash out my windows and stab me in the street. Calm down and chill out a little bit. <laughs> you need better hobbies. That's kind of yeah, I, it's not like you. It's not like I love Donald Trump. We need to kill Joe Biden on the back of your windshield. Ninety nine percent of people aren't going to look at that and go, oh, oh, that's a that's a right wing militia gun person. Yeah, no. OK, so Denison. I've never seen it outside. Yeah, it's just south of the Oklahoma River. All right. And it's west of Paris, Texas. Not like it matters. Not like you're going to drive over there. But anyway, thank you for that. Also, uh, Zach will be at NRA. Uh, but the store, well, let's see. W- what are you typing there? Zach will uh, be at NRA, but the store will still be open. So you don't have to wait. Yes, because I found a helper to help me out and take care of the orders while I'm gone. Oh, well, there you so go. So you guys are going to wait a full week to get your stuff. So please, even while we're at NRA, if you're thinking like, well, the shipping guy's not there, so I won't get my stuff for two months, and then you forget, and then you don't place the order anyway, go place the order anyway, because I've it. got somebody to come out me, take care of the or- orders, and this will also be a good test for them. There so. you go. There you go. All right, it's time for a Student of the Gun Homeroom brought to you by our good buddies at Crossbreed Holsters. Yes, indeed. All right, all right. As always, uh, this is brought to you by our good friends at Crossbreed Holsters. They've been our friends for a long, long time. Uh, going back, I, I here's the thing: I knew these guys before you did. Um, you're like, oh, you're arrogant. I'm like, no, but seriously, uh, we were before the world was hip to Crossbreed Holsters when they were in their original when in the Red Door shop. And the guys at Crossbreed know. It was, you know, it's funny is it's been going so long. We're, we're 10 plus years, 11, 12 years uh, into our relationship with Crossbreed that a lot of the people that work at Crossbreed right now in their really nice new facility have no idea about the the humble beginnings. Maybe maybe Carol, Carol lets them know or, you know, they, they remind them. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of people... 
uh, the, the, you know, these young people are like, oh man, I work for Crossbreed. They're a cool company, you know, and we're in Springfield, Missouri. It's all cool. They have no idea the, the humble beginnings, or I hope they have an idea about it, but you never know. Uh, when Mark started it in his, literally in his garage because he was doing it in the kitchen and Carol's like, quit putting that stinky plastic stuff in my oven. You're stinking up the kitchen. Go, go out into the garage and do it. So he bought, this is this little inside baseball here, a toaster, a large toaster oven and took it out in the garage so that he could get, could soften Kydex to work on because he was trying to figure out the best way because he, he needed, Mark needed a concealed carry holster that he could wear in a car, standing, getting in and out of a car, whatever, all day long that it would be discreet, but it would also be comfortable. And he discovered that all of the holsters that he, he had, a, he was like a lot of you guys. How many of you have a rubber made tote or a bin full of old hol- used holsters? Because you bought a holster, you thought it was a good idea. You're like, oh man, I read the advertisement. I saw the, the super sexy magazine article or magazine ad for this holster and I bought it. And then I wore it and I realized either A, it really wasn't a good concealment holster because it stuck out too far away from my body or uh, it was it gave me hot spots or it rubbed against me or the, the holster as I moved throughout the day, it was constantly shifting and moving and all of that. And that's exactly, that was my story. I, it, when I met Mark Craighead 12, 13 years ago, I guess it was about 12, 13 years ago, uh, I told him, I'm like, dude, I've tried inside of the waistband holsters and I can't wear them. I said, that I wear them for a couple of hours and they, they move around or they shift around or they dig into my body and I just can't do it. And he said, I understand. He goes, I was that guy. You and I were the same person. I had the exact same situation. I was trying to carry, uh, wear a inside of the waistband concealable holster and a couple hours into it, I just like, I was always wanting to move the holster, shift it, adjust it. And he's like, that's bull crap. So he started experimenting in his garage with a toaster oven because Carol's like, get out of the kitchen with that stinky melted plastic stuff. <laughs> Um, and he came up with the hybrid, what is the, the OG of holsters. Now the super tuck, he came up with the super tuck deluxe holster. Now, a lot of you guys don't understand, especially you new folks go, you know, like if you're just into guns in the last few years, you see the super tuck holster and the hybrid holster and you're like oh well yeah everybody has those everybody who makes holsters has a holster just like that yeah you know why because they stole mark craighead's design that's why 15 years ago no one had a holster like that no one had a holster like that and when mark first came out with it people were like oh that's dumb or there's that's too big or it's not going to work or blah, 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 whatever. And then they proceeded to sell hundreds and then they proceeded to sell thousands. And then every other holster maker in the world's like, oh, we need to come up with our own hybrid holster. And they did. But here's the deal. Crossbreed holsters is the OG when it comes to the super tuck, when it comes to the hybrid, when it comes to the most comfortable, concealable holster you're ever going to wear. That's just that's just the reality. And brothers and sisters, I've been there, done that, seen the elephant. So it's all about carrying a gun. It's all about being dangerous on demand. And, well, the people of Florida, this is, I love this because, lunatics in new york and new jersey and all these liberal left-wing scumbags are losing their minds now as i said i've been here and i've been paying attention to the world of guns for a long long time and i remember zach do you have this story open because you're gonna have to help me read it here Uh, yeah i got it open okay i remember 
1986 when Florida came up with this new thing in America. This is new. It was called a shall issue concealed carry permit. Meaning that unless they could find a positive, absolute, definable reason from a list of reasons for you to not have one, that they had to give you a permit to carry. And the left-wing news media in 1986, you're like, oh, they weren't, were they left-wing news media in 86? Yes, they were. Uh, they lost their collective minds. Blood in the streets. People are going to be killing each other over parking spaces and shooting each other at red lights. And ah, it's going to be blood and it's going to be anarchy. And what's the other favorite phrase of the liberal idiot, Zach? It'll be like the Wild West. Thank you. Yeah, it'll be like the Wild West. Well, that never happened. They were wrong. They've always been wrong. But that never stops them. They've always lied, but that never stops them. So now, Florida went from the largest, first, the OG in shall issue to, well, they've joined the rest of us or the rest of free America, and they are now constitutional carry. Zach, go ahead and read the uh, the story from the TampaBay.com. TampaBay.com. Yes, indeed. So, uh, DeSantis signs permitless carry gun bill into law with little fanfare. The legislation lets people concealed carry a gun without a permit and without training. Oh, thank you. Now, go on. You're welcome. Government Governor Ron DeSantis on Monday signed into law a bill that lets people carry guns without a permit and without any training. John Velko, executive vice president of Gun Owners of America, said the government signed the bill on Monday morning in the Capitol in front of a group of about 20 people. The bill, which will take effect on July 1st, has faced attacks on both sides of the gun debate. People from gun safety advocacy groups have said allowing people to carry concealed guns in public without training and removing an additional background check will make the public less safe. Of course it will. People who are People who are otherwise prohibited from carrying a gun under state law and federal law, like people with felony records and certain disqualifying misdemeanors, will be barred under the legislation. Will still be barred under the legislation. Duh. The Second Amendment advocates advocates have criticized the bill for not going far enough, saying that without allowing people to openly carry guns in public, the bill isn't, quote, true constitutional carry. Measure as DeSantis guaranteed and the legislature has hailed. Velico said the government said, said bleh, Velico said the government said that it was a great day for the Floridian <laughs> Second Amendment rights yeah. and said DeSantis noted that more than half of the states in the country will now have permitless carry measures. Quote, we think it's a step in the right direction, said Luis Valdez the Florida Director of Gun Owners of America. Quote again, permitless concealed carry is a good thing, but it's not the constitutional carry that we were promised. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that is that is too bad. And you say, like, why do you care about open carry? Well, uh, I'll tell you why, and it's as simple as this. There are still many states in the union uh, where, if, where if you uh, expose your gun, if you're carrying a gun in a holster, and it is exposed. It becomes exposed. The wind blows your jacket open or you're reaching for the top shelf or something and your shirt comes up or whatever. Uh, there are some states that where that's against the law and they call it, what do they call it? The menacing or flashing or you know any number of things where you can get in trouble if your gun... If you brandishing, brandishing, yeah, there you go. Brandishing, uh, or print, you know, there, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's actually, there was one state, I can't remember which state it was. It was probably one of the freaking communist states where if you were carrying and you were quote printing, 
if someone could discern that that was the shape of a gun underneath your t-shirt or whatever that that was the same as brandishing or menacing or whatever some kind of lunatic crap like that so that's what open carry dismisses all of that stuff open carry essentially dismisses and and knocks out all of this insane well if if grandma sees your gun then you broke the law because she saw it and she was terrorized she had a heart attack because she saw you were carrying a gun we're gonna arrest you because you were brandishing like no i wasn't brandishing the wind blew my jacket open for uh, one second and so or i reached for the top shelf and someone saw the the bottom of my holster or whatever you know uh or you know well i i can't remember what state it was you guys out there you're smart uh where if you could tell that it was the outline of a gun it was, it was printing and that's the same as brandishing which is the same as like oh come on just just stop already but here's the deal this is a good thing now the reason that it took so long is because money is involved uh, it took this long because money is involved. And when you allow the government, whether it's a sheriff, whether it's the Congress, whether whoever it is, when you allow the government to take your rights and hold them hostage and sell them back to you, when you allow the government to ransom your rights back to you, when you try and fix that, the people who are getting rich off of or making money by, like, for instance, these, whether it's a chief of police or a sheriff's department or whatever, uh, if they're making money by ransoming your rights back to you, they don't want to give up that money. We've seen this in Alabama. We saw it in, where was it? Was Alabama, Georgia? We've seen, we've seen it all over. Uh, or what's even worse is people who are supposed to be firearms instructors and they make money by charging people to take their concealed carry permit class. And then rather than say, hey, this is an instrument of liberty and we should be cheerleading for liberty, instead, they're very selfish and myopic. And we've seen this. We've seen firearms trainers talking to reporters from News Channel 7 saying, oh, I think I think allowing people to carry guns without training is, is a very dangerous situation. You piece of human filth, you scumbag. Is it a right or is it a privilege? Because you can't wrap yourself in the two-way flag and then tell the reporterette from News Channel 7 that allowing people to carry without, a, without training and permission is dangerous, then it's a privilege and it's not a right because the two are not the same. I, I, I used this story from uh, Tampa Bay because I saw that it had inflammatory liberal scumbag Democrat totalitarian language in it. It uses, see... Permitless. When you use the term permitless, what you do is you're establishing that permits are the standard. You're establishing that the people should, and as a matter of fact, are required to go to the government first and ask the government for permission. Then if they get the permission from the government, then they're allowed to behave in a certain way. Uh, it makes and i love it it's like it will make up in the dead streets more dangerous oh no 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 more no no like here's the deal first of all you're all liars and second of all people who are going to do bad things are going to do bad things regardless of the laws that you have on the books you see they'll never admit that because they're liars because admitting that would prove them to be liars and Democrats are liars. Socialists, liberals, they're liars. They have to lie to get their way. They have to lie in order to deceive you. And this Wild West, blood in the streets, 
people shooting each other for parking lots, you know, or parking spaces, blah, 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 blah. That's all part of the of the brainwashing campaign. That's all part of the totalitarian menticide meant to keep you, well, culled and tamed and conditioned. And oh, surprise! This was this story was written by a chick. Surprise! No kidding. It was written by a chick who apparently is not familiar with the uh, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and what a right actually is, because a right is something that you get when you're born. You see, a right is not something that you go to the government and ask for, and they decide that they're going to give it to you, or maybe they're not going to give it to you. That's not a right. Rights are few and far between. All right, let's move on to the next story because we're coming up on an hour now. Uh, this is and this is a, a dangerous on demand. This is why this is in the Crossbreed Holsters homeroom. It's about da- being dangerous on demand. Uh, this is from North Kakalaki. Uh, down there in North Kakalaki, they've had uh, post-Civil War. You see, what a lot of the states in the post-Civil War did is they said, all right, well, you Republicans up there in D.C., and the, they were all run, the states were run by Democrats. Uh, you Republicans up there in D.C. say we can't have slaves anymore. All right, but we'll be damned if we're going to let these former slaves have guns. So what they did is they quick, fast, in a hurry, went into their legislations, and they're like, okay, well, you can have a gun, but you have to get a permit to buy it, not to carry it, not to conceal it, to own it, to actually go into a store with money and purchase it. You first have to go to the sheriff, and you have to ask the sheriff for permission. And here's the deal. The sheriff can say no. You're not allowed. Well, what do you mean? I'm not a convicted felon. I'm not a criminal. I mean, well, it doesn't matter. You're not allowed because I said you're not allowed. All of these bills were put in place to keep black folk, well, from getting guns. To keep black folk from having handguns. Because what is the number one tool for personal self-defense What is the number one tool for self-defense in America? It's not shotguns. It's not rifles. The number one tool is a handgun. Baseball bat. Or a hand hand weapon, if if the use of the term gun offends some of you. A hand weapon. Yeah, I don't know where that... When did that start? Uh, When people needed better hobbies. All right, but go ahead and go to uh, wunc.org. This just happened uh, March 29th. Yep, relatively recently. With Democrats absent, NC House overrides governor's gun veto bill. A gun bill veto. Gun bill veto. The NC House voted Wednesday morning to override Governor Roy Cooper's veto of a controversial gun bill. It's not it's controversial. Republican. Controversial. No, okay. it's, it's they're lying, but go on. Okay. So you're saying I got the wrong word. It's Republicans' first veto override since 2018. The move repeals a long-standing requirement that handgun buyers get a permit and background checks from their local sheriff. Republicans say the requirement is unnecessary and leads to long wait times to get a permit, but opponents say repealing the law would make it easier for dangerous people to buy guns. Of course they did. The bill would also allow guns on private school campuses when the facilities host ch- ch- services. Bleh. The bill would also allow guns on private school campuses when the facilities host church services and school isn't in session. The GOP is one vote short of a veto-proof majority in the House. But while all Democrats on the floor voted to back the governor's veto, three moderate Democrats were absent from the session. That gave Republicans a three-fifths majority to make the bill become law. House Democratic leader Robert Reeves was upset that House leaders didn't allow any debate on the measure Wednesday. He noticed that it came days after the Nashville school shooting, where six people, including three children, were killed. There have been 130 mass shootings in the U.S. so far this year, according to the Gun Violence Archive. That's such a lie, but okay, whatever. Quote, the world has changed since we debated this issue, Reeves told reporters after the vote. 
Quote, what the world has done has shown us our children aren't safe. And the only thing this bill did was make it easier for people with mental health issues to get guns. It made it easier for domestic abusers to get guns. Oh, God. End quote. The Republican rep, Destin Hall, defended the lack of debate, which was an unusual move for the House. Quote, members have heard all the pros and all the cons that members may want to hear about this bill. All right, you can stop there. Yeah, so here's the deal, you racist, scumbag Democrats. The fact that they've been, and I lived in North Carolina, and this is a thing when I lived in North Carolina. Uh, you, you, I, I cannot believe that the Republicans don't have the stones to call a spade a spade. To call, and it took Republicans to overturn this racist gun law. All right. And they cannot, there's no way an intellectually honest person can argue that this, this law was not put into place to keep guns out of the hands of former slaves, out of black folks. And black folk who keep voting for Democrats, that's, you are stupid. And I'm, I don't even have any, I don't have time for you. Oh, uh, you're voting to be enslaved. They do not want you to be free. They do not want you to be independent. They don't want you to think for yourselves. They want you back on their ideological plantation. You'll do what you're told. You'll vote for who we tell you to vote for. Jack, that's why Trump had to go. That's why he was such a huge threat to the Democrat scumbag party. Uh, Because black folk love donald trump a lot of them love donald trump and they couldn't have that they couldn't have black folk leaving their intellectual their ideological plantation and thinking for themselves and trying to better themselves because according to democrats you can't better yourself if you're a black person you need them to fix everything for you you're not good enough to fix it on your own you have to vote for them and give them power over your life, and then then things will get better for you. Of course, they never have. The inner cities where black folk vote for Democrats in mass for the last 50 to 60 years are not getting better. The conditions in Detroit are not better. The conditions in Philadelphia or Chicago are not better. They're worse than they've ever been. Uh, yeah, it's more lies from the left. Oh, the, the world has changed and the world has shown us the world has shown us nothing. It was one of you. It was a liberal lunatic Democrat that murdered children in Nashville. It's going to make it easier for people with mental health issues. No, it's how. How. No, this was an extra step put in place to arbitrarily deny people the right to keep and bear arms. And apparently, to be a Democrat member of the House, you don't have to be acquainted with the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. It's not, it's not a, uh, a requirement to, to be a Democrat legislator. You don't, you have to know you're required to know nothing about the Constitution itself. So, there you go. All right, so uh, congratulations to the Republicans for overturning the Demo- the racist Democrats in North Carolina. And let's face it, well, I'm going to call a spade a spade. Like, oh, you can't say that. The hell I can't. It's the truth. And I'm not going to be silenced because the truth hurts your feelings. The truth is, North Carolina Democrats are a bunch of racists. They put this law into place to keep black people disarmed. And the fact that black people, that folks of African or Jamaican descent in North Carolina still vote for Democrats is psychotic. It's psychotic. Laws don't stop bad people. The gun-free and what... No one has the stones to ask when these idiot Democrats get up and like, oh, the Democrats, they're going to make people more dangerous than the children. 
Hey, imbecile, you ever heard of a thing called the Gun-Free Schools Act? I have. In uh, 1994, 1995 time frame, Bill Clinton and his scumbag Democrat House they actually there was a gun free schools act before and in 94 95 clinton and his scumbag democrats they strengthened it they enhanced and strengthened it and boy they went out in front of all the cameras and the newsies and they're like oh our schools are all going to be safe and secure and this bill will ensure that our children can can be assured that they can go to school and not have to worry about gun violence. And it's all lies. It's all propaganda. It's all liberal brainwashing. The fact of the matter is you want to do a fun research project, do it on your own. Look up the number of school attacks before 1995 and look up the number of school attacks after 1995. When Bill Clinton and all his scumbag cronies posed for pictures and gave interviews and talked about making schools safe for children and and no longer will guns be allowed. Because apparently a policy statement from a criminal Democrat Bill Clinton's a criminal. If you don't know that, he's an unconvicted criminal. He should be in prison. Apparently, liberal lunatics, left-wing Democrat lunatics, are not going to go to schools and commit mass murders because Bill Clinton signed a, a law, an unconstitutional law, because quite frankly, the federal government has no authority to dictate what happens at a local school inside of a sovereign state. But we don't want to talk about actual constitutionality. Why why mess around fogging, you know, why why cloud the issue talking about what the Constitution allows the federal government to do? Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I feel like like I've taken crazy pills. How is it that not one single person that claims to be a journalist can raise their hand and say, let's talk about the absolute and object failure of the Gun-Free Schools Act. Let's talk about how mass, uh, mass murders and uh, shootings and attacks on schools went up. were a thousand times more prevalent after this than they were before it. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about how creating victim target rich environments where psychos, where liberal Democrat psychos know that nobody inside that building is going to have a gun. They won't be able to stop me. Let's talk about that. They don't want to talk about that. So Christian school in Nashville targeted by liberal left wing mentally deranged lunatic Media won't say it's a hate crime. They won't say it was a direct, deliberate attack on Christians. Why? Because they're liars. Because they're hypocrites. Talked about it last week. If that would have been a Jewish school, and it doesn't matter who, if it would have been a Jewish school and anyone would have walked into a Jewish school, if it would have been a synagogue, it would have been anti-Semitism, and we have to pass laws. We need new laws to stop anti-Semitism. It was a black church and a white person walked in and shouted, that's automatic racism. But a member, a, a, a proud Democrat liberal lunatic walks into a Christian school and commits mass murder and the media is not sure. They, they're, they're just not sure. They, it's too early to tell. We don't know. We, we can't jump to conclusions. A week later, Got the story open, Jared, from, or Zach, from uh, Channel 5, NBC Channel 5, DFW. Yes, this is, indeed. This is going to be a one and done, so pay attention. Brazilian man kills four children with a hatchet at daycare center. Yes. A man with a hatchet bursts into a daycare center Wednesday in Brazil. 
killing four children, authorities said, in an attack that shook the country and put pressure on the government to curb the rising tide of violence. At least four other children were wounded in the attack in Blumiao, a city of 366,000 in southern Brazil near the Atlantic coast. The assailant, who got inside by jumping over a wall, turned himself in at a police station, officials said. Later. He did not. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. He did not appear to have any connection with the center, which offers nursery services, preschool education, and after-school activities. The dead were between the ages of five and seven, authorities said. Authorities were searching for a motive. The police detective leading the investigation, Ronnie Esteves, told a reporter. Estevez? Yeah. Estevez. Hours after the attack, the justice and education ministers pledged to invest in new violence prevention prevention efforts. All right. Now, let's go ahead and pause right here. If you look, the name of the daycare center is hard to find. Uh, it's buried at the bottom. Oh. Uh, what it what you what you don't know is the private daycare center is called Cantino do Bom Pastor. Now that's Portuguese. They don't speak Spanish in Brazil. They speak Portuguese. And you say, all right, well, so what? Who cares? Well, you should care because translated into English, that stand means what? Good thing we have uh, translated into English. It's the good shepherd. Oh, snap. Where does the term the good shepherd come from? Zach? The Bible? The Bible! Ding, 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 ding. There you go. The good shepherd comes from the bible we're not going to talk about it because that would actually that might make people think that this had something to do with the fact if it's the good shepherd daycare and it's a private daycare not a public one it's not and would that be a christian daycare center would this be two attacks in one week against christian children oh okay no, 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 no. just because it's the good it's a private daycare center called the good shepherd doesn't mean that it's christian and it doesn't mean they're like we have no idea why this guy did that oh he's not affiliated with it at all oh and they're going to invest in new violence prevention efforts you see, Brazil actually had some violence prevention efforts going. Under the previous president, they had eased the restrictions of gun ownership by Brazilian citizens. You see, uh, Rio de Janeiro and Brazil has a, all the big cities in Brazil are out of control violent. Remember when they had the, uh, Zach, the soccer tournament down there. And, yeah, I remember that. And they, they, get, they gave out pamphlets to tourists telling them how to be robbed. Remember that? And they were the chief of police in Rio de Janeiro was very concerned about visiting foreigners because they didn't understand how to be robbed. Yes, this is a real, this is psycho world. This is 1984. This is, this is lunatic time. The chief of police in Rio de Janeiro was very concerned that visiting guests from foreign countries were in danger because they didn't understand how to behave when they were being robbed. So they issued pamphlets and they created a web page to let people know when they visited Rio how they were supposed to behave 
while they were being robbed. Yes, this is reality. Well, in for those of you who don't pay attention to South American politics, uh, recently, a few, within the last several years, the uh, people of Brazil got sick of these left-wing liberal Democrat scumbag policies, these socialist policies, uh, which did nothing to stop crime but everything to punish innocent people. You see, their their hardcore anti-gun laws were doing nothing to protect the people. What? That's crazy. So the new president and his new government started relaxing the restrictions, and for the first time, people in Brazil could actually own firearms for personal defense. But you see, that dude was not, he wasn't down with the sickness. He wasn't down with the globalists. He was not down with the whole New World Order thing. That's not what we do. We don't give people the ability to resist. It's not what we do. So they decided they decided to, uh, the powers that be, instituted a coup. They uh, basically did the same thing that we did in America when we installed a dementia-riddled meat puppet into the highest office in the land. They cooked the votes. And then when the people rebelled, the sycophant media said, uh, Alt-right, far-right extremists refuse to accept the legitimate vote of the people. Yeah, because the people want to be enslaved. Because that president that said, hey, I'm going to give you guys like actually some liberty. Would you like some liberty? And the people of all Brazil are like, no, we hate liberty. We want to be enslaved. We love crime. We love criminals. So now they're back to where they were. But don't worry. Fear not. They're going to come up with anti-violence legislation. Is it not already illegal in Brazil to murder people? Zach, can you look that up for me? Uh, Is murder illegal in Brazil? Sure thing. I'm kidding. Uh, Pretty sure murder is illegal in Brazil. So... Are they going to come up with legislation in Brazil that is more serious than anti-murder legislation? Isn't anti-murder legislation, aren't anti-murder laws the top number one? I mean, when it comes to punishment, isn't murder the number one penalty, the highest, hardest penalty in the world? Or is illegally carrying a gun or speaking out against the government worse than murdering people? Depends on who you ask. Yeah, exactly. All right, so uh, you guys remember, if you've been listening to me for any length of time, that I've reminded you that leftists, Democrats, socialists, liberals are bullies. They're bullies and they're terrorists. Because there are two types of people. We talked about this what is it, on Friday, Zach? There are two types of people in the world. I believe it's Friday, yes. There are people who want to be left alone to live their lives without interference, and there are those who cannot and will not allow that to happen. You see, it's not enough for a lunatic Democrat to put on a dress and play pretend like they're a girl when they're not a girl, then they're a boy. It's not enough for them to do that. No, you have to be forced to play pretend with them. You have to be forced to pretend like that's normal behavior. You have to endorse it and applaud it. And if you question it, you must be silenced. Because liberals and Democrats and socialists are all the same and they're all bullies. And you say, I don't believe you, Paul. Okay, cool. We got a story here from foxnews.com. You can get it from anywhere you want. Don't cry like a little baby because it came from Fox. I can't believe we get news from Fox. 
Just happened, April 7th. Riley Gaines. Go ahead and read it, Zach. Riley Gaines, quote, ambushed and physically hit after saving women's sports speech at San Francisco State, I assume, University. Yes. Uh, Riley Gaines was barricaded in a room on the third floor of a university building for nearly three hours after the protests began. Uh, former NCAA swimmer Riley Gaines was barricaded in a room. I already said that. Yeah. After she was physically assaulted following a speech to students about saving women's sports at a Turning Point USA in Leadership Institute event on the campus. Louise Barker, or Lewis Barker, Riley's husband, said that he had brief conversations with her while she was barricaded in the room for nearly three hours. Quote, she told me she was hit multiple times by a guy in a dress. I was shaking. It made me that mad. It makes me sick to, th- to feel so helpless about it, Barker said. Quote, she was under police protection and was still hit by a man wearing a dress. On Twitter, Gaines shared footage she took showing her being rushed out of the venue by police officers amid an onslaught of verbal attacks from the detractors who surrounded her. Quote, the prisons are running. The prisoners. The prisoners are running the asylum at FSSU. SFSU. I was ambushed and physically hit twice by a man, Gaines wrote in the tweet. Quote, this is proof that women need sex protected spaces. Still only further assures me I'm doing something right. While they want you silent, when they want you silent, speak louder. That was her that was her tweet. Yeah. Uh, there was a company by her of a, a video of her rushing out of the the place. Yes. So just as simply more proof that the lunatic left is out of control. It's not red MAGA hat Trump supporters. It's not white conservative Christians that are shooting up our schools and our malls and our churches. It's lunatic left-wing Democrats. They won't talk about it. The media won't address it, but it's right there in your face. And if you are not prepared to protect yourself from these lunatics, if you are not prepared to protect your children from these out-of-control terrorists and bullies on the left, you're wrong and you need to fix yourself. Who is going to protect your children? Who is going to protect your wives? Not the police. Oh, the police will. The police will show up later. This woman, Riley Gaines, uh, had police protection and she was still attacked. She was still struck by a lunatic man wearing a dress. These people are out of control. There's lots of reasons for it. I don't have time to get into those, but we need to accept that. Liberals are bullies. Liberals and lunatic are and Democrats and socialists and they're all these people are willing puppets of their masters. Their masters sit far away on their thrones in their state capitals and in D.C., and they create this dissension. They create these psychotic disciples of lunacy. Then they send them out to attack you. It's real, it's happening, and you need to be prepared to defend yourself. You need to be prepared to defend your children against these lunatics. When will we finally accept the, well, or come to the understanding that children must be protected from these people? And we cannot protect children with gun-free school act laws, and we cannot protect children with policy statements, and we don't protect children with plastic signs. We don't protect our children with happy thoughts and hopes and dreams and We protect our children by having responsible adults being ready and prepared to put themselves between innocent children and deranged lunatics. That's the only way to protect the children. The good shepherd doesn't protect his flock from the wolves and the lions and the bears with hopes and dreams and policy statements. No, the good shepherd, David, how how many wild animals does the Bible tell us that David killed? He killed a lion, he killed a bear, he killed freaking Goliath. He put himself between the innocent 
and the evil. It's been 24 years since we witnessed the disciples of Satan in Columbine High School murdering innocent children. 24 years we've had to prepare, and yet we still don't. We've had lesson after lesson. We've watched people in uniform run like cowards away from our children. We've watched them run and hide while children are being slaughtered yards away. We put our faith in the government. We're like, well, it's the government. It's the state. It's the city. It's their job to protect our children. No, it's your job to protect your children. It's no one else's. You see, you remember uh, Getty Lee and Rush? Remember the song Free Will? I'm not sure if Neil Peart, when he wrote that, whether he was endorsing the idea that the first gift we were given from our creator was free will or whether he was mocking people of faith. But in the line, and I'm going to wrap this up, but in in the verse he says, if you choose not to decide what, Zach, you know the line, right? You still have made a choice. You still have made a choice. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm going to tell you. In action is a decision. Failure to act is a decision. If you're listening to me within the borders of the United States of America, in free America, the training is available. The tools that you would need to engage in the training the tools that you would need to stand between innocent children and psychotic liberal lunatics, it's all available. It's there for the taking. You could be participating in training, in education. You could be preparing yourself physically and mentally to stand between innocent, the innocent and the evil. The fact that you're not doing that and that you have not done that is a decision that you have made. In action, the failure to prepare, the failure to act is still a purposeful decision. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. The day may come where you are called upon to stand between the innocent and the evil. And hopes and dreams and happy thoughts are not going to do you any good. You're either going to be prepared and equipped to stop that evil from harming innocent lives, or you're going to be completely unprepared and completely unequipped. I'm going to go back and, and remind you, uh, that my good friend, uh, you know, one of the things that James wrote in the book and that I transcribed and translated, <laughs> tra- I didn't really translate, but uh, the four pillars of fighting. When you are faced with a violent encounter, when you are faced with a, a, a monster, when the monster arrives, you have a choice. You have a choice to make. And there's going to be one of four outcomes. You And you will decide. You're either going to be a live hero who saved innocent life. You're going to be a dead hero who saved innocent life, but in the process lost their own. Or you're going to be a living coward. and you're, Or you're going to be a dead coward. That is how you will be judged. You either be... and. Which outcome that is, is up to you. You, ha- you can make that decision. And like I said, failure to act in action is a decision. Yeah. All right, uh, coming up this week on Student of the Gun University podcast, it is a single topic, short form, easy to digest podcast. It's separate from this one. One topic at a time, easy to digest. 
And uh, this coming one is going to be it. We do it every Thursday. Dress for success on the range. Yes, dress for success on the range. All right, Zach. Listen to that over at SOTGU.com or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. That's right, SOTGU.com. Zach, how can they become grad program members so they can listen to us on Thursdays and Fridays? Yes, indeed. You want to become a grad program member. Part, part of the reason we mentioned earlier, but also so you can get two more hours of the bonus of the radio show every week. You go to getsotg.com, sign up, do the trial. Once you're happy with the trial, you continue with the show. You get access to the grad program exclusive Discord, which has a lot more channels. And like we said, live access to the recordings of the two extra bonus hours that you get not live as well. So get sotg.com sign up today get a whole bunch of awesome stuff there you go all right ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here we truly appreciate it as i uh let you go i'm gonna remind you you're a beginner once but you're a student for life thanks for staying until the end want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like rating or review it makes a big difference have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com.